Hello everyone and welcome to Epiphany. Today is Sunday, June the 7th, the first Sunday after the Pentecost, Trinity Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the dark. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry air appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let there be signs and four seasons and four days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the great two lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply 
and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and every, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with the seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 8 Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have made them rulers under the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A reading from Matthew's Gospel. The last lines of Matthew's Gospel. Well, folks, last Sunday we came together, by video anyway, to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the Day of Pentecost. We celebrated the gift of the Holy Spirit when the Spirit came down like a rushing wind to empower the disciples. We celebrated last Sunday the day the church was born, the day the church was founded. And now, today, a week later, we celebrate a new beginning, a new season of the church year, a season that in fact covers most of the calendar year. From now, you see, until December, we are in this new season. And we are in a new season in more ways than one, as you no doubt know. Well, this is called the season after Pentecost. And we kick off this new season of the church year with a special occasion. For today, as you heard earlier, is Trinity Sunday. Today is a day in the life of the church where we celebrate 
a doctrine. That's right. Not a historical event like Christmas or Easter, but in fact a doctrine of the church. Today we celebrate a particularly Christian understanding of who God is and how God works, the doctrine of the Trinity. Today we celebrate the one and three and three in one nature of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now it is a curious notion to be sure to say that God is one and yet three, somehow all at the same time. And we know that untold volumes have been written on this doctrine. Gallons and gallons of ink have been spilled, trying to get at, trying to understand, trying to fathom what it means that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and yet one God. Well, folks, it's also a long-standing joke, in the Episcopal Church at least, that this is the day when the rector likes to be on vacation. That's right. A day when, say, we'll get a supply priest, or better yet, a seminarian, to uh, preach the word. But alas, I have no idea when my next vacation will be. And, uh, of course, our seminarian, our dear friend Sherry, preached last Sunday on Pentecost. And, by the way, she did a wonderful job. Thank you again, Sherry, for sharing that message. Well, so here goes. I'll do my best today not to spout any heresy or to offend the sensibilities of any of my seminary professors or, God forbid, leave you hopelessly confused. Because it's not my job to sit here and lecture you on all the highly theological and often obtuse language and doctrinal theories of Trinitarian thought, no. No, for me, it is enough to say that the one in three and three in one God we know and love simply offers us a model. Yes, that's right, a model. A model, as it were, for how we are to live our own lives in this world. A model for how we should exist, and more importantly, how we should relate. Relate to God and relate to one another. Because our triune God is all about relationship. A relationship of love. The love, that is, that the Father has for his only begotten Son. The devotion and reverence that the Son has for his heavenly Father. And the spirit of love that pervades that relationship, that binds it and yet also gives it its dynamic flow. It's all about relationship. The Father loves the Son, the Son loves the Father, and the Holy Spirit is the love between them. Again, today is all about that relationship of love. It is my hope that we can learn something about God and about ourselves by studying that very concept, the concept of love, a relationship of love. Listen to the words of Jesus from the gospel passage that we just heard a few moments ago. After his resurrection, Jesus meets the disciples on a mountaintop in Galilee. He gives them instruction. He gives them a mission, a mission of love. Go out into the world, Jesus says, and make disciples. Share the good news of God's love. Baptize them. Teach them, show them the way, walk the path with them, Jesus says. Love them is what he means. And remember, he says, remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Love will continue. That is the promise of our Lord. Jesus is inviting the disciples and all of us into that ever-flowing, ever-continuing relationship of love that is the very nature of God. And that makes sense. It makes sense to me. Because if you think about it, at the end of the day, this church, our church, the Church of the Epiphany, is just one big relationship. 
even if we are temporarily separated for the sake of our health and safety. We are still in relationship. Here in the church, we are being called to come together in a new, interesting, creative, and innovative way in order to share God's love. We are being called right now to tell the old, old story in ways that a world that is constantly changing, a way that the world that's constantly changing can't hear it. We are called to depend on each other for mutual support and encouragement. I'm hoping we are finding ways to do that right now. We are called together as a people to aspire to be the best versions of ourselves that is possible. That is what it means, folks, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. That is what it means to be a member of the church. It has less to do, folks, with being in church on Sundays and more about how we are the church out there in the world. But let me hasten to add, I miss deeply our opportunities to be together, coming to worship on Sundays, sharing food and fellowship, looking each other in the eye, shaking hands, hugging necks, kissing cheeks. I miss it all. But, but we are no less the members of Christ's body. And as Christ's body in this day and age, we have a job to do. We have to be a witness to that love, the love of God, the love of God that the world needs so badly to hear. We need to be a voice for changes to a world that too often disadvantages the poor, the sick, and people of color. We need to speak out against injustice and abuse and racism. We need to lend a hand to the least of these, just as Jesus taught us. And that really doesn't happen on Sunday morning. It happens every day of the week. You know, I saw a t-shirt recently that read, the church has left the building. And that's true. The church has indeed left the building, at least temporarily. But I'm beginning to think of this present unhappiness, as I have come to call it, as a new opportunity. An opportunity to find creative ways to be the church the world needs. Today, folks, we share something special. We share the love of God shown to us in God's very own triune nature, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We share that love with our fellow church members. We share that love with our friends and families and neighbors. And we share that love with a world that could surely use it right now in this moment. And we do all this in order to heed Jesus' call from that mountain in Galilee nearly 2,000 years ago to share the good news of God's love just as Jesus shared it with us. Amen. Well, folks, I hope you have a wonderful week. I have you, hope you have opportunities to hear about God's love, to experience God's love, and then to share God's love. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us now and remain with us always. Amen. Now. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.